Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we have something completely different because uh, a couple of years ago I purchased this stove. Is it a stove? Well, maybe it's a stove. It's a, it's a hybrid stove because it's a pallet burner and you can put in normal firewoods and you can control it from your phone and it's the first stove I've ever gotten that needed a firmware update before it could get going. So. Um, winter is coming, which my thermometer here uh, clearly stated this morning. Right now the outside temperature is 5.9 degrees Celsius, which is awful because I just left Portugal and the temperature down there is still 33 degrees. I picked my vacation poorly. I should be there now. <laughs> but the temperature has gone up 2 degrees because when I woke up this morning it was 3.9 degrees. So uh, yeah, actually just now it, it reached 6 degrees. So that is um, an improvement. So I need to prepare the stove for the winter burn. And I cheated a little bit because I actually turned it on yesterday mostly just to get rid of the wood that I had left in there from last year. I don't use it in the summer. Summer. The Danish summer. <laughs> well, actually a month ago I was at the level where I should have turned it on because there was nights where it was suddenly 16 degrees in the living room and I was under a blanket and yeah, I should have turned on the stove at that point. But it is broken! Uh, it's not broken broken it can still burn stuff but um, the automatic ignition has uh, stopped working so uh, we're gonna try and fix that and I have a ninja trick uh, well it's not a it's a savings trick so uh, but first we're gonna clean it a little bit because um, it needs to go. Uh, the chimney sweeper is coming next week here in Denmark it's mandatory to have a, if you have something that burns like a stove or a wood burner and I have both, I have a wood burner in the basement and I have a stove in the living room, it's mandatory to have the, the, the chimney sweeper to come I think at least once a year and mine comes twice a year so I'm paying extra. I'm not sure I'm getting full benefits of that but um, yeah, it's mandatory, so he will come and he will do the, he will clean this chimney and he will do some stuff. It's fine. But I'm gonna clean this one myself because I wanna see it working now. So this is the, the stove in question. And you can kind of see the glass here. It's, it's not that transparent anymore. But this is the a Duo and it's the H1, which means that it's a hybrid. And if we open up, we can see both the the dirt inside which every stove will have but over there there is where the pallets comes up so this is the burn chamber and what I normally do is that I put in I fill it up with wood like you would normally do but then I don't light it I just turn on the pallets and you do that down here or from your phone but there's a very convenient little button there that you just press and it comes on and the pallets are in here there and they're good to go so yeah so it's a very smart system the the wood that I've then put in there will ignite with the pellets and the stove will at some point discover oh this is plenty hot and it will turn down the pellets and turn them off and then the wood will be burning in the burn chamber until the wood is well burned down and the uh, I think it's measuring the, the smoke temperature going out. So at some point the smoke temperature will be low enough that it will think, oh, we need to turn on the pallets again. And it does that. And that's about the time where I uh, need to go to bed anyway, so I usually turn it off. So, yeah, it needs a bit of a clean inside and maybe outside. It's a bit dusty over here. I'm not going to touch the pallets, they're fine. So one of the safety features of this stove is that the door is spring-loaded, which is bloody irritating when you have to clean it. So uh, this is the later lighter uh, to turn on fires, but it also just about fits. Oh, if we get it there and there, and it keeps the 
door open. <laughs> Amazing. So I have a lot of crap in here that didn't burn. So this is from yesterday's tiny little fire and well, there's a few pieces that needs a second go. There's no reason to throw it out, just burn it again. Oh yeah, this is not much left in this one. But, uh, it's not gonna go down the grill very well. So I think that was the bigger pieces. Yeah. It always looks like a dirty mess when you start cleaning the stove. It's um, well, it's it's not that bad. This is the brush that comes with the stove. Uh, so so I uh, leave all the big pieces. We're just gonna gonna burn another day. And in the middle of it, there is the ash. Well, it's kind of the ashtray. Where all the ashes go down. There's another big piece that didn't burn. It's not gonna go down that way. So everything that can go down there will go. I have no idea why this hasn't burned. Bad leaves. <laughs> so I usually get rid of all the ash that way. There are some some broccoli things in here, stuff that has come out of trees and become very hard, like volcano rock or something, and that doesn't burn at all. I've tried for a long time, so that stuff I'm just gonna throw that out. See, it's all white, so it's like. I have no idea what it actually is, but volcanic rock in my stove. Okay, so I'm almost there. Um, some of this volcanic rock, you can see it over here. It gets stuck to the tiles down here, and these are these heat-resistant tiles that are in here. But what I found, if, if I try to get this up, it will eat away of the tiles, and these tiles, well, they're bloody expensive to replace. Uh, so I don't really want to do that. Uh, but we're almost there. The rest of this is not really that important. But um, but we also have to clean uh, in here. Well, I see that we have a lot of pallets. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna clean those. Might throw them back in the pallet burner. The good ones. Yeah, that's kind of a mess. How do I do that? I should probably not have removed that. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna put this back in place. And like that. But it's clean it enough so that it's it sits really well. And the leftover pallets here that I couldn't fit back in it. We're gonna put those back in the pallet magazine. I know it's it's a few minutes of heating right there. <sighs> the rest I'll take with the vacuum cleaner. So a stove gets miscolored when it's used and it gets hot and some of it just washes right off and some of it you could paint it again and uh, for this stove, this is a Danish produced stove, it's, not, it's made not that far from where I'm at. Uh, in Aarhus it's made, or a smaller city near Aarhus, so I would be able to get some paint in the right color for it. but. It's gonna be, it's gonna look like exactly the same in just a little, oh, that was a lot of stuff there. Um, so for the time being, it's fine. Um, the windows though, are very dirty. And I have had a million people suggest the, the ash trick, where you, uh, you use ash and newspaper and a little bit of water to clean them. And that does work, but 
there's it's not a wonder weapon and neither is a wet cloth and um, but this is removes all the loose stuff so a scraper is usually the best choice but it depends very much what the dirt is what and how thick it is so this is not very up here it's not very thick down here is a bit thicker and this sod in the middle here is very difficult to get off but yeah a little bit of of work here and it's gonna look amazing again well let's just give it a try the local newspaper and uh, i do believe that we might have some sod down here or some some little bits to uh, to do that let's see how that works and uh, I used a little bit of water on the newspaper and as you can see it does work but it's not it's not like a miracle thing you still have to put in a lot of effort to, to get all of this sort off And it's not good at that stuff, but it's very inexpensive, I must admit. The thicker stuff, uh, I used uh, scrapers, and here I have such a thing. And uh, I didn't actually realize that, but I can just turn this blade around, and it has another good side because it's 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 used on one side, and the other side is still good. Made in Denmark. That's that's right often you see that, but I see that I have already purchased replacement blades for it, even some that is longer. Yeah, I see that they can be shortened off. There is a, there's, you can break it off so that it gets the right width of it, uh, which would not put it in the middle, so that's not really an option, but. I think we're just gonna use this on the other side first because it has a still has a good side. <laughs> so yeah, I have used this uh, a lot, so it's pretty dang used. There, ouch! And you just scrape off, and this is for the 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 rougher stuff. The finer stuff, the newspaper took just fine. I have another one which uses something that is that comes a bit closer to normal uh, blades, uh, like uh, barber blades. I'm pretty sure you could actually put in a normal barber beard shaving blade in here, maybe. But I see that I have also purchased some of those. I have forgotten about purchasing all of this. Now we can take the scraper and scrape this off. And it's really good for the for the harder, the, the more dense stuff. And it's not as good for the for that short thing in the middle, which the newspaper is better at. But of course, this makes a lot of dust. So yeah, way more efficient than the newspaper and the sort thing for the for the rougher stuff here. This stove is fantastic because it has no less than three windows. So I need to do the ones on the side. You might not even be able to see, but this is also a window. And so, um, yeah, three times the work. Well, 
so cleaning the windows uh, makes quite a mess everywhere around it because that fine dust that is on the windows ends up everywhere else uh, they're cleaning the stove in all uh, usually is a blotchy mess so in combination with the fire regulations that uh, there has to be nothing burnable near the wood stove it's a good idea to have uh, tiles here so they're easy to clean okay so now you can see through all the glass in the in the wood burner I don't know if you can clean it on the outside it's still wet um, it's still ugly inside I'm not gonna do anything about that when the fire is burning you don't see that at all but uh, I told you that this wasn't working very well because this is a very smart and automatic stove and it has an igniter that ignites the pallets in here like any other pallet burner uh, and that one has stopped working and we're gonna we're gonna try and replace that so over here on the left of the wood burner there is a little service hatch right there and it takes a philip head screwdriver so we're gonna, gonna remove those screws and we're gonna be careful not to drop the plate down on the tiles because no reason to break any tiles if we don't have to so this comes out there easy enough then we have this thing oh, which I didn't connect because I figured out that it was broken it puts in here and it, it goes up to a slot up here there is a rubber gasket up here there I'm not sure if there's enough light it might be and you need to take that rubber gasket out there and the igniter comes out and it looks like that so so to replace that uh, keramisk iltina ceramic electric igniter uh, you have to pay 583.85 danish kroners which is <laughs> 85 dollars which is ridiculous so um I got one from China for $20 so are they they are almost it's a bit longer okay wonder if that's gonna work hmm it might just be sticking out a little bit more but I'm gonna try it anyway uh, it has a really nice long wire here it doesn't need to be that long so this is uh, the, the expensive one is definitely higher quality that's very clear and it has this nice teflon wire here which we're not going to be able to copy uh, we might be able to steal it it has some color down here oh that's just dirt so yeah we're gonna try and put this in oh i didn't see that it's longer but other than that it looks about the same yeah we're gonna try it out so I removed this connector uh, off a good the other part at the basement and I sorted it uh, put a bit of solder on the ends here um, what this is is it's a resistor so um, you can kind of see the lines in here there is a resistance in this so when you put power on the leads it warms up it heats up and you can kind of see this one has blown those holes here and there is discoloring and it has melted something there and yeah um, that means that there is no longer any resistance in this so when I take my voltmeter if, if there is a resistance it beeps and if we put the leads on here it doesn't do anything and if I put it over here, you can see that it doesn't show anything either. Oh, come on. There. Uh, nothing. So it's it's dead. Dead in the water. 
no resistance that means that it will not heat up it is um, disconnected inside so when we take the new one here and we put the leads on it's gonna beep and it tells me that there is a resistance of 29.1 ohms in that so I'm not sure if you could hear it in my voice but I wasn't happy with that resistance that I just measured here so we moved into the basement because um, I am measuring a resistance of 49 point well I was measuring 49.1 ohms on this and that means that this thing uh, when it's powered with 230 volts would draw oh crap yeah sorry just realized mid sentence there that this plug wouldn't fit in that one so yeah we have replaced it i'm gonna test the the igniter because uh, those 49.1 ohms and 230 volts would be over a thousand watts and this thing is supposed to be like 300 350 watts so that's uh let's just check that it's still the thing we still have oh actually the resistance has gone up ah now it's about the same so we're gonna try and use the blue yeti blue yeti here okay so um yeah we're gonna put this in there and it's 60 percent charged and we're gonna try and power this see what happens so it starts smoking over here uh, we are at 400 400 watts 380 330 320 so okay the the wattage goes down as it is heating up so that might just be good okay i think we're good to go i got nervous so let's turn this off again we can see it uh, glowing over here it should stop glowing in just a little bit and maybe even after this little bit the resistance might have gone up on it i got scared there and i wanted to make sure that i hadn't purchased anything from china that would totally destroy my wood stove very nice to have that tested so let's try the ohms again see where we're at and it's just a resistor so there shouldn't be any power here so uh yeah now the ohms are a lot better it's like 120 ish it's hot as hell so i'm gonna i'm gonna let it be for just a little bit so we are up here again um i managed to take the the teflon coating of these wires here so um and i've just checked they do actually kind of fit on this one it has cooled down quite a substantial now but the teflon wire is a little bit too long so we're gonna shorten that a little bit i think it's too long it's not a lot but and just to make it easier to get on we're gonna use some dish soap and I'm gonna put some is it cool enough yeah it's good enough um don't want to melt the carpet or anything you know there that looks great wires are coming out here let's pop this in and just again the one that i'm putting in is a centimeter longer maybe half but a little bit longer so yeah might run into issues oh it's it's in there I need I'm just gonna put the vacuum cleaner to it because I see some some dirt in there so it did not sound like 
anything came out. So let's see how this new thing fits. It should go in and go up. There. It's all the way in and this rubber seal goes in. Must be some kind of a heat resistant rubber seal because otherwise that thing would melt. Okay, it's kind of in good enough and I have my wires here and they go in here and in 230 volts AC doesn't matter which way they go so uh, yeah let's pop those in let's uh, disconnect the stove first though stove has been disconnected and we need to just pop those in let's see if we can do that Power is back on, so we just need to connect power again. Okay, this is a new phone for me, and as soon as I connected to the stove, it wanted new firmware. So, um, yeah, we are pushing new firmware to the stove before we turn it on. So, that was just because I wanted to turn it on from the phone and show you that, but yeah, we need, to, we need a little bit of a firmware upgrade there. <laughs> So apparently we are on this firmware, uh, 2.6, and we are almost there, 99%. This is where it crashes. <laughs> yes, yes, it's not as if we have anything better to do. And, and you thought this video was not going to be IT related. Well, look at that, upgrading firmware right there. Uh, except we didn't get any new firmware version down there as far as I can uh, I don't remember uh, That number, but yeah, we should be able to turn on the stove now. Let's let's do that start It got that Get back to you when it starts smoking if it starts smoking the smoke It's burning something is happening That's a lot of smoke and no fire. Ah, I missed it. <laughs> About a few seconds. But, well, there is the fire. <laughs> that took its sweet time, I can tell you that. I think the well the pallets has been in there since last winter so they might have uh, sucked in a bit of humidity but yeah the ignition finally worked so from time to time I am asked if I'm still pleased with this stove and I am uh, now this thing burned out on me after two years so uh, naturally that was an a bad thing $85 for a new one is a lot of money I managed to find it on in China for like those 21 point something something US dollars and shipped here so that is a big benefit that um, well that's one-fourth of the price uh, that 
is now apparently working just fine. I don't know if I can really recommend this. Well, it's your stove, it's your igniter, and you decide if you wanna go with the one from China. I will leave it in the description below if you decide so, but yeah, there's a lot of different models of them, so even if you don't have that stove, you might be able to find an igniter that will fit in your thing. And I had to do a little bit of magic to get it to fit correctly and steal the nice uh, Teflon cables that is on the original one. Not that the the one that came from China was, it felt okay. And the cables fitted inside the other Teflon thing. So also I'll try and leave some links for some of those scrapers to clean the glass with. The method of paper and ash works well when you're done with the scraper. That is my experience. The scraper is way better for the, for the tough stuff and the paper with the ash is very good for the fine stuff. And that, is, and that is how I do it. So this is a very expensive stove. This is approximately 3000 US dollars for it to be smart and be able to use both pellets and wood I haven't showed the wood in there but because I wanted to see the ignition coming up and if the, the chamber is full of wood at the same time, well it's more difficult to see. Well I could have seen all the smoke but yeah, now I could go and collect my wood in the, in the garden, I have it up there and I can put that in and I can just burn some wood but I think I need to burn some of these uh, palettes I think they uh, they need to be burned <laughs> and if you think this video wasn't IT related well remember we firmware updated something <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind remember to give this video a like that helps a lot and if you're on a TV uh, this is my friend Cindy's channel um, you can use the remote uh, I need to uh, I need to go up and I need to go sideways and I can go and to the like button there and I can press OK and then I have liked the video. Just press it again and we can go back. So yeah, it's also possible on TV. Other than that, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.